all for coming. Um, this public forum is a result of a request at the Board of Selectmen's meeting and also discussions among people at Town Hall, you know, about the usefulness of having a public forum like this. We've been through a lot with our, um, and sorry, I'm going to apologize, I'm a little under the weather today, so I'm not super shy. This is a result of, you know, an ongoing effort to rehouse our police, solve our town hall space needs. Um, a while back, we chose a budget of $6.5 million to fix our needs, and what we found is it was um, very inadequate, much to our frustration. So here we are. Um, one thing that's rang true through this process is there seems to be savings in combining these projects. Um, they share a lot of utilities, they share a roof, they share an elevator, sewer system. Um, and it's also a dose of reality. This process has taken a long time and our cost per square foot has really grown. So um, this is where we're at. We're gonna have a presentation. Um, yes, Eric Swan's the chair of the building committee. I'm also a member of the building committee. Uh, I guess now I'm gonna turn it over to you. Great. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. As JR said, this is a result um, and part of probably part of the process that we would have hoped to do anyway. We were sort of brought up at the select meeting, so hopefully this is just the same information, a little different form. We would like to hear from you. That's that's the point um, of having a public meeting that's outside a building committee meeting that's outside a board of select meeting. So, as JR said, you know there was an approved presented project at 6.5 million um, and from 2016 until today there is escalation cost in the market we're in that cycle of construction costs where um, year over year it's at least five almost six percent in terms of increases and it's a compounded increase each year which has added cost to our our budget numbers that we use the budget numbers that we did use for the building committee um, were, uh, were for 2000 15, early 2016, uh, we did have some escalation in there, but we didn't, at that time, um, with the condition of the marketplace construction, we didn't think it was going to be this booming at this time. So we were a little short there. With that um, approved project, we then went out to hire, as the state requires, for a project of, of um, over a million dollars in and using tax dollars for public construction. There are certain laws to follow, and we had to hire an OPM firm to help manage the process and hire a design team. And when we say architect or design team, we have an architect, and the architect has structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, civil engineer as part of the, quote, design team. So it's just not one firm. There's, there's several firms in that design team. Um, and so after, after that process, to start again, um, we picked up the information from CSS Architects, which was started in 2013, where they did initial surveys and interviews. And we went back and re-interviewed the police station, re-interviewed the town hall, even did an interview with the fire station here in order to check and assess the current needs for the project that we would um, be presenting or building. I think the last thing we wanted to do was build a project and find out on day one that we were deficient in spaces because of older information. That said, the 6.5 million that was presented was presented as part of three or four schemes that night that included everything in recap from a police station, a fire station, police station, a police station, town hall renovation addition, a new, poli new town hall, new uh, police station and a combined facility. Um, and there were various numbers or estimates in the presentation, kind of like a la carte, you select this, you, you get this. And basically we selected 6.5, which is the lowest common, denom lowest common number on the table for the projects. And what that means is that you could build a police station on the far lot uh, within the 6.5 million, but the resultant leftover money would be, then be for town hall renovations, and the renovations at town hall were deficient in terms of completing the tasks. This town has before it a police station need, a town hall need, and eventually something at the fire station um, here. Those were all identified long ago. They were identified back in 2012 
when the Board of Selectmen at that time formed the Public Safety Complex Committee and the Woodward School Committee to look at Woodward School for reuse for town facilities. Uh, and thought at that time that combining this fire station and a police station together would make the most cost-effective cost um, project, you know, started in 2012. So here we are today with the architect, with our uh, OPM, after that initial program was done. And of course, the you know, program is like, what would you like at town hall? What are your future needs? What is everything that you need? The program came in quite high, large, and, the, pro, and the, um, the cost came in quite high. And so that that's the normal part of the process. I think some people got alarmed, but I also think it was a necessary part of the process to then bring us back to, okay, if we work it backwards now and then we select a budget, of which we have presented at Town Hall, uh, Board of Selectors meeting a few times now, in terms of saying, we had an 8.5 budget, what does that mean? And then we try to... Build, um, build out the program that would meet that dollar amount. That's the same thing we did last time. We picked the dollar and then tried to fit what we could into it. So from that amount, we determined with the selectmen that that program that was presented for 8.5 million was just too small and, and was still missing um, spaces that were needed uh, for the basic operations. So the program moved up a little bit, and with that program and the development of that program, um, is the option that we're going to represent here today. It's the option that was presented at the Board of Selections meeting last Tuesday uh, and voted on. Um, and if, with that, I think, Jeff, I'll ask you to just walk through the current current option on the table. Sure. The option on the table. Can everybody hear me okay? Uh, my name is Jeff Shaw. I'm principal of Context Architecture. And as Ark said, we've been working with the town for most of the year, um, looking at, from the beginning, a very thorough space needs analysis uh, for both town hall and police. Um, and from that beginning point, running through a number of iterations to get us to this point today. So I'm, I'm going to focus on the proposed option. Uh, starting to your left, my right, the site plan that's there before you. Um, the, the project proposes to uh, remove the existing town hall and replace it with a larger building, 18,600 square feet, uh, on two floors, approximately starting at where the lowest level of the existing building is, which has police functions in it, and then another level above that. And uh, that would replace the existing town hall um, in this location here. This is the white dash line is the existing town hall, and obviously that is the new building here. Um, the building would sit closest to Morgan Ave and High Road to allow us to get parking behind and to the side, and also to allow us to reconfigure the driveways here and here to reduce the uh, safety issues that are present in the current configuration where there's a big, large opening here and a large opening here, and it's a little confusing as to where you're supposed to go. So these to uh, driveway openings lead to this parking here, some of which will be reserved for police use only, similar to how it is now, and some of which uh, goes to garages at this lowest level for uh, the police department. We'll also maintain the connection to the, to the rear of the existing fire station. There'll be two separate entrances, one at the upper level, um, set of stairs and a ramp, so that this is handicap accessible to the main town hall floor, is, I'll explain in a minute, the upper floor, and then an entrance at the lower level for the police station. There will be an elevator in the building to allow you to get between both floors from the inside of the building. But breaking up the entry points into two allows folks to go to one door or the other, depending on the type of business that they have. On the other end of the site, we're going to take the existing lot that's there that has some paving on it, which is approximately you know, this region right here and expand it into a full parking lot for approximately 80 parking spaces. With this new parking lot plus the parking uh, that we're making around the Town Hall Police Station building, we will um, meet the parking requirements for police, fire, and Town Hall on this site. So uh, obviously the rest of the site will be fully landscaped um, with sidewalks, curbing, 
and all the uh, requisite utilities uh, for the building. This board here has the uh, building plans. On the left is the lower level, on the right um, is the upper level, the uh, town hall level. So at the town hall level, again, come in a vestibule with a lobby. Um, most of the public functions of the building would be up front, or the private functions, even though they're all public, it's a town hall, so everybody's going everywhere or in the back. Um, and then there's an elevator and a stair to get you down to the police level. Police level here, um, all of the police functions, essentially the secure functions of the building around the back and sides uh, with the main dispatch room in the center. And then um, of more importance to this group here is the tra a training room and a selectman's meeting room um, in this corner. And I should say that the main reason why this is being proposed is for a couple of uh, items that have already been said is that combining both the police and the and the town hall into one building allow, allows us to take advantage of combined savings of um, things like elevators, stairs, exterior wall, structure, mechanical systems, spaces like the training room. We can combine that for the training room for the police, uh, town uh, uh, selectmen's meeting room for the town hall, for other meetings that are taking place there, um, bathrooms, public areas of the building can be combined. Uh, and as I said, mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems of the building all in one. Um, this com combination of the two, uh, we believe, is approximately a $1 million savings versus building two new facilities um, and two separate projects. So that is the main layout of the building and the main um, sort of configuration on the site. And um, I don't know, Eric, is there anything you want me to go over? Unless there's more space, if I think we open it up and we let the questions sure. come and we try to answer the questions. Sure. Um, I know the budget isn't presented here. It is on a handout that we have. Some of you have that already. Um, it's a $12 million project that's being proposed currently. So I guess we'll turn it over to questions and get started. Uh, where are you going to put all the snow? So obviously, <laughs> We're at the initial stages of the project, and um, we are going what's through what's called a feasibility study or an early con conceptual design study. There is still s at least six months worth of detailed design work that's going to happen on this project. So a lot of things like figuring out the nuts and bolts and the details are yet to come. I have a lot of experience designing these facilities. We have an OPM on the project who also has a lot of experience working on these facilities. So we feel confident sitting here today that um, all of those issues will be solved by that point. I could sit here and point out where I think it's going to go, but I can tell you right now, we haven't decided exactly where all the snow is going to go. Um, it's a tight site on this area of the building, but there are certainly areas uh, where snow could go. You live right here? Yep. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's not going to go on your yard. It has before. Just for okay. Yeah. But that's, that's the intent of this is to create a new facility here that's going to be um, designed in, in, with modern building practices and standards. So you know, there's, there's going to be a planting buffer along this side of the site, and there's no way that we would design this project with the intention being that snow storage would be on that side. In fact, we'd have, we have to go through a regulatory process with the town to go through a site plan review, and that'll be part of that. So they're gonna wanna know where snow storage is going to be going, and that process will happen in the future. Um, so that piece will be taken care of, and, and it will be you know, out in the public view when it, when it is discussed, because it'll be at a public hearing. Okay, that was question one. So, if you notice out the window there, there's a pretty good grade from High Road down to the where we're in this building here. And there's, when it rains hard or if the snow is melting, there's a tremendous water flow going down the hill and it puddles into a small lake there in that little niche. Right in there? Which is right on the other side of the wall of the screen. But yeah, exactly, right in there. And then it attempts to run down to the pond. Yeah, so all this is wet back here. You know, it, it's basically wet. Um, and then there's the actual wetlands where we've got delineated wetlands back in the back here. So 
drainage from this area is going to be uh, taken care of as part of the project. Um, I'm, I'm assuming as Jeff said, this still has to go for the conservation, the town's conservation commission, um, and the planning board will get a look at it through standard any kind of building project in town. If you know those issues brought up, should be addressed with a project that is, you know, we have a chance to improve things that should be improved. Yeah. Now, and it's not just a matter of improving it. The, we have to comply with the state's stormwater management guidelines. It's a requirement as part of a new building. So there's no way that we're going to be able to get away with a project that's kind of, you know, it's good enough. We're just going to fix it up. We have to comply with it. When we go through conservation and planning, that's going to be a requirement. So I don't think you should be concerned. The state is already putting in these guidelines for this very reason. And then where are the HVAC systems for the building? City. Again, I have no idea at this point, but I, if I were to guess, I'm going to say we're probably going to be using uh, the attic space. Uh, this, this area of the building here uh, is going to have gabled roof ends, but then this area in the front is either going to be a low slope or a slightly sloped pitched roof, and that's actually designed. It's not shown in the plans, but it's designed for storage about 3,000, 4,000 square feet of storage space, the elevator will go up there, the stair will go up there, so the town gets some additional storage mm -hmm. in the attic, but we are gonna use a chunk of that space for air handling systems for the building, and we'll probably end up with, you know, blue bridge on the top of the building that will um, take in and exhaust air from those systems, but those systems will be inside the building, so a lot of the noise that could be present from a rooftop unit won't be uh, as present. And emergency generators, where are they at? There'll definitely be an emergency generator on the site. I don't know where we're going to put one yet. I mean, there's spots around the building that it, it could go. Uh, typically, in these types of scenarios, where it's so close to a residential neighborhood, we'll be specifying all of the acoustic treatments that you can get for emergency generators. They have an uh, acoustic package, essentially a little enclosure with a muffler system. It's still an emergency generator. But the police station has to have one. You can't, that building can't go down. So um, we're gonna do as much as we can to mitigate that, but there will be, there will be an emergency generator here. All right, and lastly, you mentioned the police are gonna have some parking somewhere here, I assume that- Yeah, out like of those to, spots, some of them like will be- have their cars running perpetually for some reason on the front of this building. Well, actually, the town hall. Um, that can be really annoying if they're pointing at me. Sure. I so understand. this, in terms of layout, as Jeff said, it hasn't quite been decided. But the public parking on this side, overflow parking here. Um, there may need to be some employee parking in the bar parking lot. Um, but in terms of the spaces, with this being hatched off, there is a garage space and the sally port and entrance into the police station for for the policemen themselves is all down located at this area. That's where I guess they probably park the cruisers. Operationally, um, because of the way the police operate, at times that's, that's just the right way to do it. Um, because you're in the middle of the winter and, and you can't leave the car getting iced over. But I understand the annoyance. I would be too. And it's exhaust and then we got the headlights pointing at the house. And yeah. yeah, and I think in this case, the, the, because of the way it's configured here, that the headlights probably won't be pointing at anybody. They'll be they'll be pointing at the fire station or the police station. <coughs> Two places that it probably doesn't matter. I guess we'll continue to follow. Is there a next question? Well, I'll, I'll kind of like to do mine right now because following up on the uh, concerns of the screening and, and the drainage, I, I see no place on this plan that has any space for any screening. Remember, it's a conceptual plan. We haven't gotten into detailed design yet. I can't tell I'm you. Just looking at space. I can't tell you exactly whether or not that's going to be three feet, five feet, what, how much bufferage there's going to be there. I can't say exactly. Is this building going to be one or two feet longer or shorter? We're in concept stage now. I can tell you basically what it looks like, basically what it the, the square footage of the building is and what it's going to cost and generally how it's going to be laid out. But there's six months more of detailed design work that, that will answer and get to all of those issues. And then on the other side, uh, there's a significant grade change on, on the, uh, 
that I don't see any north arrow on the east. Is that the east side? Yeah, east is generally this direction. Yeah, isn't there a significant grade rise there? There, there is because you have a butter right there too. Pardon? There's an abutter right on that side. Well, yeah, I know that. Right I know there, that. So. There's a little bit of a grade here, but of course, is that going to require a retaining wall? Or? Uh, I, 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 don't I, know. I, I don't have a problem with, with saying that this parking lot is going to be able to be accomplished within the budget that we have, but I, because I think that it encompasses things like that, but I don't have the ability to design to that level of detail at this stage. It's just um, inefficient with the town's resources to, to go through and do an entire so You didn't did scale design. this off when you drew this? Oh, it's scaled. And I can tell and you exactly no what the dimensions are, but the final what I'm product saying is, is not that done yet. This, may, this may change. In the detailed right. design, it may get slightly changed, and that will allow for things like retaining walls and buffering zones, fencing. We haven't shown utilities, topographic information. There's a lot that is going to have to happen. That's why there's six months worth of design work. And then, with regards to drainage, where does this area drain to now? I mean, you, you, you've got. Uh, it looks to me you've got about 75 to 80 percent impervious surface there. There's um, no question we're going to be increasing the impervious area of this site, and it's likely we may increase it here, but yeah. that, that's a little Where does it drain to? There's a drain line in the street, um, Morgan Ave. Where does that go? The parking lot. Right? right behind the parking lot. Goes into the, the big pond. part on the right. It goes into a wetland out back there. And where, and where does the that pond drain? Yeah, so the, the other thing that we have to do as part of this project, as I mentioned earlier, there will be um, stormwater management uh, requirement. So with that requirement, we're going to actually have to infiltrate you know, big infiltration basins under this parking lot, more than likely under the parking lot. That would allow it to percolate down. And so the burden on the town's infrastructure that they, that's there would be It's not going to percolate because that's all former swamp, filled swamp. It's not going to percolate. A saturated land there. Yeah. These are all great points, Fred, and they're not all answered today. As you know, it's a process. Somehow we got to get beyond concept. We've got to get approved. And if the questions that you ask are questions that get asked for any project, no matter what goes on yeah. on Morgan Ave. Yeah. So they're not specific to this right. concept. Yeah, if they get into this kind of we also know that we don't even know. Um, Jeff, you had mentioned that you're looking at a $12 million project here um, by combining the buildings, and that you would save a, a million dollars from building a new police station and a new town hall. But I don't recall anybody ever mentioning building a new town hall. They're just going to remodel the existing one. Sure. Is that? I'll turn it over to Eric because I think that remodeling the town hall has been looked at a number of times in the past. Right. So we have looked at remodeling the town hall. And then as the building committee advanced projects, and we, we were asked to look at a separate police station, we still had a combined, and we compared that to a combined new, new um, town hall. So that the idea of a new town hall and a new police station um, on town hall site isn't, this isn't the first time the, the previous committees came up with that proposal and at that time we thought we were going to save a little bit um, more money uh, I guess it was a little less because of escalation so in terms of the town hall it is an existing building we, we did think that we only needed to add 1400 square feet to it I think in terms of the newer program and the layout of that program because now that we have a, an architect and we can lay it out that it actually needs to be um, the reconfiguring wouldn't be as economical as, as building a new layout for it. Um, the downstairs has about eight feet of floor to ceiling. And so as we improve it and renovate it, I mean, it's an old building that, that didn't have modern day equipment in it. And it has smaller sort of residential size equipment in it. As we bring it up to date, we need to bring electrical and mechanical up to date. It also, in the current condition, has one side with a couple uh, light wells around the side. And as we've, this building committee has been involved in this project, we've gone from uh, a police station that had sewer backup issues to connecting the sewer, the town hall, hall already had water, to um, improving that, having the town hall people move out. And so the basement it has minimal use 
now. I think it's just in terms of its existing configuration and because of the police department was in there, we never really fully got in there to, to, to assess it. And, when, and now that we're at that point of assessing it, we just don't think that the dollars are gonna be well spent renovating this existing building back into the spaces that it needs to be for the, for the uses that need to go there. Because the, the police department is situated in there now. It's just they they don't have the sally port and the lockups and they don't have the sally port, right? They don't, they have cells down there, but they can't use them. They're basically just storage rooms. Right. So the dispatch is brought upstairs. Uh, the offices are brought upstairs. There's I guess they're probably still using the locker rooms, and there's a small mechanical room that's being re being used at, at the moment. Because uh, on the, the first study that you have on here, you're showing quite an addition on the back of the town hall when it was the town hall. I was just wondering why couldn't you keep the police department where they are and just put that addition on the back and put your salary board and your lockups and the elevator to make a two-story addition on the back of the existing building <coughs> to keep the existing building there. They're already in there operating and you spent a lot of money to move them into there. It's just, an, it, you know, there may be another option here. I think the, the idea of renovating it in terms of the long run of a building that needs continuous maintenance to building a newer building, um, and especially for the police station remaining in there, there'd be quite a, a bit of overhaul. The police station also is uh, an upgraded use occupancy in the building code and requires additional building Spring. features that normal other buildings like a residence or even the town hall or a bank wouldn't require. So in terms of going through that and renovating the building from the I don't know, past estimates that we have, it just seems like it, it wasn't the best value for the dog. Yeah. There was also a space issue too because even if you were to take that footprint that's shown on that original and just say town hall's first floor, police station's lower level, kind of similar to the concept that's here, but, but just renovate it, it's not as much space. So there'd be a, a loss of space for both the town hall and the police, in addition to what Eric was saying, um, to do that. I think we all agree that, and has been every plan in the building committee is to keep the face of the town hall on high road. Nobody wants to lose that. And in terms of the option, nobody wants to put the police station as the front door or the, or the, the front on high road. And the police station <coughs> has been deferred down and back or the police station over there with the town hall up here. So that there, there is, um, design-wise, the concept and, and great importance to keeping the town hall in that location. Okay. Uh, I, I don't really understand why that is. If what, you can maybe speak what? some more to that. Like, for example, it, I'm sorry, am I, did I interrupt you? No, is I it? can ask again. Okay, I mean, at first I want to thank everybody for all the work that done. I know how hard it is for a committee to put together a report and then have people question it. So, thank you. Um, but what I'm hearing and reading people's letters and so on to the, um, to the paper is people saying, you really got to start thinking outside the box. And so, based on what you just said, one thought, and I've actually thought of this before, I don't know why it, why it has to be on high road. Why can't it, for example, be at the old holistic family practice building, which has elevators and it has handicap parking and it has all kinds of th space so that you could modify. That, that building is in very rough shape. We, we taught it about a year ago. I taught it the selectman there. Yeah. Very. That's in rough shape, really? Yes, if you walk around it, exterior it's and interior, it needs a, a full redo. They're old exam rooms, right. and I don't want to dump on the it's building, but so I wouldn't expect anybody to move into one of those rooms. It's not It's not a residence. It's a building set up for medical practice. Right. And so after their tour, Martha, um, the town planner, myself, and Damon took a tour and walked around. And it is, it's, it, there's a, a, a tremendous amount of renovation in that. That building functioned very well for what it did. Right. And it was added on to over time to expand its use. Every room has a counter and a sink, and um, and it's, it's it's like doctor's office house. I mean, that was the quaintness and the charm and, and the ability to run it that way. But it is not in great shape. No kidding. That's I mean, I suspect some other people here went to Horace so for many, many years. This, the second answer to that is in terms of Newberry. In terms of our historic tradition, we're going to be 400 years old in 
So what was the mass? 17 years or something like that? It's coming up. It's coming up. 400 years old. We have something that nobody, a lot of other people don't have across the entire country, and that's our historic roots. And our historic roots in New England date back to uh, setting up a town green, having houses around that town green, having that town green for multiple functions and purposes of you know, feeding your, your cattle and then gathering. And as you drive through New England towns, you come across the village green and you know you've hit the center of town. And hopefully or usually there's a church or there's a town hall or fire station that has a name on it and you know where you are. And you can drive through New England and find where you are just by looking at the civic building in that town located at the, at the green. We in Newbury have two greens. We have a lower green and we have an upper green. Just as Newburyport has the Mal, which was their green. So there's uh, planning-wise, historic-wise, there's and um, sense of village and community. There's great important importance of the town hall on the village green. Understanding that that town hall originally wasn't there, and the originally settling place wasn't <laughs> here. It was down at the lower green, but the lower green was set adjacent to the lots that were laid out for the people that stepped off the boat and said, "Okay, here we are. This is how we're gonna." start things and these are the plots and here's our village green and here's our our organizing factor for get for starting our community and so we're trying to build and keep to tradition of New England by keeping that town hall there and we think that if we do and we know that if we do a nice building and it certainly says Newbury town hall on it that people driving through will you know that will be one of the images that they see and take away of our town and we should build something that we're all very proud of. So along those lines, and I, again, I'm getting a sense of the history based on what people have been saying. You mentioned earlier that, that the old school had been considered and rejected. Why? If, the, if it was so important to have something off the green. Hey, may I? Okay. You're talking the Woodbridge School. Yeah. Okay. When I was first elected in old four, Dick Joy and myself got together and decided, let's do something with that, put a town hall in that. Yeah. So we put a proposal together. We had um, John Collins, the engineer. We had Bill Sally as the architect. We had Will Lojek as the contractor. We had a plan put together to buy it for a dollar. This was before procurement law now. We could buy it for a dollar. The contractor would turn it into town offices and lease it back to us for 20 years for appointed $2.3 million. They laughed me off the town floor. That's insane. Put the building up for sale. It was that, I put, I put it together. Nice proposal. Didn't work. That's why. I, there's lots of, of history, and if you'd like, I can explain a little bit more history after this, because I don't think everyone here wants to hear it again. But, you know, back in 2006, it was listed in the town master plan. The town is required by state law to produce a master plan every so often. And in 2006, it says right in there, most important project in town, police station. So we've been discussing this since 2006. It's been an issue identified since 2001. And you know, we live in a small community. The great thing about our community is that we have an annual town meeting, that we have selectmen that are actually residents you know, of our town, and that people get to come and say what they want, when they want, and we're very personal about it. Sometimes that personability has detracted from the progress or interest of the greater good. At least that's my opinion, being on the board and presenting multiple projects a lot, which I feel were, were great. And we seem to have to keep meandering and moving. What, we got another question. Mark. Well, I'd just like to echo some of what this uh, woman mentioned about uh, the thanks that, that need to be uh, shared. Uh, with the Board of Selectmen, uh, the Municipal Building Committee for all of its work, certainly the OPM and, and uh, the architects to, to get us to, to this point in time, so thank you all. You know, it dawned on me as I was thinking about coming here today that this is really about doing the right thing versus the easy thing. And the easiest thing would have been for this Board of Selectmen and this town administration to say, Let's move forward for anywhere between 6.5 and 8.5 and hope for the best. We'll keep our fingers and toes crossed. We'll spend as much as we have to and get it as far as they can get us. Uh, but they didn't do that. They took a good, long, hard look at that 6.5 million. 
They realized then that the 8.5 million wasn't going to suit the town's needs short term or long term. And so they come back before the residents, maybe swallowing some pride, maybe admitting a mistake. And that's not the easiest thing in the world to do if you're a, if you're a member of town government, right? Nobody wants to admit they made a mistake. We can dwell on the mistake of 6.5, or we can move forward. And I would suggest we move forward. Um, I'd just like to broaden the conversation a little bit, because it seems like everything is focused on the building, and, and I understand why that is. I, I like to focus on other things, like, and again, I mentioned this the other night at the Board of Selectmen's meeting, I'm not sure what the number is. Uh, I'm guessing that you know, we could all wake up one morning and it's 15, 20 years from now and we're still renting on Kent Way. Seems that way. And we've now put probably, help me with this, $6 million into the town's money, into renting, $300,000 a year times 20 years, and that rent is escalating every year or every two years, I'm sure. So what is this town gonna, gonna take out of its operating budget over the next 20 years? to rent without any, any form of equity. Six million, seven million, eight million dollars, are you happy with that? <coughs> I'm also concerned about my home value. Uh, this was a great town when I, when I uh, bought my house 42 years ago, it's a great town now. But as a lay person, it would seem to me that in part, not in total, but in part, my house's value, just like everybody else's house's value in this town, is based in some way, shape, or form on uh, the sense of community we have, the facilities we have, the public safety we have. And that includes police, that includes fire, that includes town administration. So I say to myself, with this debt exclusion override and with hopefully some of the funding that might come from other sources and maybe bring it down to 210 to $240 a year. So over 28 years, I'm spending about maybe $6,000, give or take, in additional taxes. And I gotta believe that my home's value is gonna be increased by at least that much, if not a lot more, hopefully, by having the kind of facilities that new people, young people wanna come to and have their kids safe going to school. So I'm willing to bet the $240 a year on taxes against a home value that 10, 20, 30 years from now is gonna be worth a lot more than that. Yes, sir. My question is uh, a lot less, my comments will be a lot less eloquent, but uh, my question refers to research and comparison, maybe to other places. Um, I regularly go on 133 through that part of Rowley. I really don't know the difference in population between the two towns, but um, Rowley, like us, has quite a, uh, quite a bit of geography. So it's, there's some similarities. I wonder, has the committee or the architects, have, have you noticed, you really can't miss it, just over Route 1 on the right-hand side is a whole big complex, a huge complex, it seems, for the town of Rowley. Do, do, you, do you regularly or have you so, talked to them? Yes. Uh, yes. Compare? Early, er, That's what I want to know. Earlier in the process, several years ago, they went before the town to ask, request funding to hire the OPM and the architect to bring them on board to get a design that could be more advanced and presented to the people before a budget was presented and, and agreed to. That failed. You know, everyone could see, why do, we, why do we have to hire them now? Let's figure out what we're going to do come up with a budget, then we'll decide on the budget. And then we were just totally focused on that number. As part of that, um, I reached out to Jeff three and a half years ago just by looking on the web and finding out who are the architects that we might hire, who are the people that do municipal projects. Um, CSS architects we hired out of Wakefield provided um, a number of projects that they had worked on. Jeff provided a number of projects he worked on. Uh, Daedalus Associates was one of the people that was bidding for uh, the job that didn't get it, that Kevin has uh, provided some information, and we did show that in past meetings of here are about 20 projects. Here's the population of those towns. 
here's the size facility they're building. And like Salisbury, there are some asterisks in terms of the size of their 18,000 square foot facility, and you understand that in terms of what they need for services with the beach and the rise in their population in the summer. Then we came back to Newbury and tried to explain that Newbury has, we have three schools. I mean, we have, you know, we have our elementary school, we have the Triton High School, which is a regional school that brings students in, and we have Governor's School. So we have more, um, we have three separate facilities of schools. So that was taken into account for. And of those, we looked at population. There's 6,600 census, 2010 census says 6,666. I think people think it's slightly less than that, but around 6,000. So we looked at stations, and at stations, the, the minimum number being built was somewhere around seven. Eight, nine, 10 were average. And then depending on, you know, if you're in Framingham, you're building 23,000 square feet. Then there were other projects that combined <coughs> facilities. So we did look at those numbers. I have them, I have them in my bag. I brought half my box with me to pull out anything. If, if I can find it again. But there are comparisons to other towns. Uh, and I'm sure, Kevin, we could ask you to find a few more. Jeff, you could bring more. You did bring a few more forward um, to try to put our town, our town size, and what other, other municipalities are doing. Um, we've talked to um, Merrimack. We've talked to Salisbury. Um, we've talked to Rowley. Everybody's got some, you know, they're, they have a slightly different complex that's going on there. Thank you. I think you've done a lot of homework. Right. Right again? Okay, back to the nice lady here. Is that you? One of you who was ta talking, sure. about, <laughs> talking about the, uh, the uh, holistic building. And I would agree with you that the building is probably not suitable. The site, however, is. And her point was that it's more central. Newbury has a unique situation. We have, well, we used to have two towns. We had Old Town and we had Byfield. And believe me, never the two met. <laughs> now we have three towns because Plum Island has a lot of year-round residents on it, and we have Old Town and we have Byfield. It would be great if we had the uh, town hall in the center of things, which would be on Route 1, and it would tend to unite this town, which it has really never been united in my lifetime anyway, that's seven, almost 76 years. That would be the site. This site here, you've got a behemoth of a building on a postage stamp lot. It is just overpowering everything, overpowering the area. And it's just too much for the site. That site out there would, is much larger. It would take this size building much better, and it would, re, it would unite the town. Center of town, taking the town and Putting it on a map and drawing an X through it is exactly next to the transfer station, right next to um, <coughs> the next to tra transfer where Boston Road and uh, Hay Street come together. Um, we did look at that; it didn't work. That long, so no. We can sit down, Fred. And we can go back over uh, October 28, 2014, the library presentation, where we went through all the sites and we finally determined that the benefit of site <coughs> site costs, site improvement costs, site location costs all came back to Morgan Ave. And I think a lot of people, you know, people clapped and people were all happy and we, people hugging each other and, and I think even you said this is a great idea. No, I did not. Right. So I'm going to go back and watch, <laughs> watch the tape. But we have done that study and we did look around. And when we look at other sites, just as people would say, well, how could you, how could you put the police in temporary facilities for $700,000? Well, what's, the, what's that property going to cost us? What's the next property going to cost us? Governors was a great idea because they were going to donate a site to us. But in order to get any any um, sewer and water back to their water and sewer treatment plant, meant digging up Route 1 yeah, yeah. for a quarter of a mile yeah. through ledge, which you can see as you drive by. No, no, no comment there. So that great idea <clears throat> fell flat. And it, you know, it was a good idea, and governors offered it up. Uh, you know, the Woodward School stuff said it came and went. That was a great idea. Um, the, the town forest, we actually got the DPW and the health department to go out there and dig several test pits, that failed. 
And, the, and you cannot take, and then everyone's like, oh, put a tight tank on it, do this. It's like, stop, this is a public municipal building. We have rules and regulations from the government and standards we, gotta, we have to follow. So uh, we did look at that. Um, we looked at uh, JRM yeah. recycling site. Um, yeah, we blew that opportunity. Yeah. And we blew that opportunity again, too. So I think we can go over site selection. I think, as I said, there is, you know, the historic precedent of having a town here isn't all that old because it's not in a truly historic building, but it is in a historic site and a historic, nationally uh, historic, um, help me out here, zone. Setting? Setting, yes. town. Yes. Mr. Walker. Eric, you're absolutely right in what you said about site selection. And site selection was a very long, arduous process. But one of the things that was emphasized and one of the things that caused Morgan Ave to become the location was the ability to hook up to municipal and sewer and water. And we now have it. And that's one of the reasons that you know this site became our main locus of, of emphasizing community flow. The town so everything, hall. everything you said was true, right. but so I the town think hall. you really got to emphasize the fact that we have municipal The town hall had water, and it needed sewer, and the sewer was just up the street in yep. a, a relatively short distance. And by bringing the sewer and the water to the town hall, we knew that we could eventually extend it a short distance and connect it to the fire station, of which we still had issues in terms of being a separate one. But the thought process there of extending yep. it um, was, was good forward thinking. When you're, when you're dealing with municipal buildings and trying to vision forward for 50 years, sometimes having water and sewer is incredibly important. And for me, when you start to put millions of dollars into older buildings, it gets hard to. Well, part of the, the some of the site where it's currently raised between the parking on one side and the parking right out front is, is where the septic was. And so that was a limiting factor in terms of parking and, and maneuverability across that site and locations of where we might have put an addition. It, it, as we're gone through this process, it, everyone has to remember that there were several other processes and things working themselves out. This is not exactly like the linear process where we started here and we had one good idea after the next and we ended up here. We, we've kind of gone around in circles. <coughs> The public safety complex committee that originally was charged to look at a fire station police station for 12 million dollars was the start of everybody questioning and, and fathoming how, how could how could it cost 12 million dollars and i think most people were taking residential house costs and size and not relating that to, to commercial construction costs but you know that project as first presented somewhere around 2014 was a 12 million dollar project and here we are right back again with a solution for combined facilities Approximately that amount. I think you know, Fred raised the issue of aesthetic concerns, and I actually shared them, though I know that aesthetics is in the eye of the beholder. But it does seem to me that a you know, two story plus attic space structure doesn't fit the characteristics that I think we want. But my comment is really about something else. Uh, I'm not going to support the $12 million project, just to be clear about that. But it seems to me that, though I could go through some of the um, issues I have with that, I think we need to ask ourselves as well, what are we going to do if we fail at town hall meeting or at the ballot box? I think there's a great likelihood that the $12 million will be voted down. But maybe it won't. But if it is, what are we going to do? And I would argue that would bring us back to maybe a 10,000 square foot police station on the lot back here which could be built within the 6.4 million. And then with the money left over, not enough to do the whole thing, but begin to renovate Town Hall. It's an old building, as Jeff has pointed out. It has problems, but we can get the police station built, then we'd see what we had left over, then come back to the people that I think would support an additional, more well-defined number than what we're seeing right now. But again, my key point is gonna be, what are we gonna do if the $12 million project gets voted down. I don't expect you to answer that, but I hope we're all thinking about that. So a few things left, and I'll ask your question, and I'm laughing at the answer, but um, the, you know, the building, pro building committees, committees, multiple committees, have a dozen projects to bring out. It's not up for the building committee to decide which project gets put before. So 
you know, we've looked at a tremendous amount of things. There are a tremendous amount of options. And the question is, why is this, is, is this the best option, really? Um, and for reasoning, you know, selectmen have seen all these options. Um, a lot of town people have voted on various options and various parts of options to get us there. I, I think the idea of building or, or solving the most that we can now in today's dollars is better than pushing things down the road to tomorrow's dollars. Combining, um, I mean, no offense to these guys, but the task of, of setting up the work just to hire these guys and creating the documentation and the proposal and the organization to do that took um, six months longer than planned. It was a fair amount of work. We put things in shape, but certainly the next project could just pick them up, rehash them, edit them a little bit, move forward a lot quicker. That took us some time. So it's just the amount of effort it takes. And then, you know, there is the public construction process. We have to go out for public bid. And it's, um, you know, it has many benefits. It has some detractions. And, you know, that's not for us to debate here, but it has a certain cost to it. And it certainly is not as efficient as hiring or going for um, your own bidding process where you're inviting contractors and bidding them out and um, managing the state and the way the state does it and the way the state wants to open it up to multiple people and then take the subcontractors <coughs> and pair them with a contractor as risk inherent and risk drives up price and there's the reward is that multiple firms that might not have had the opportunity to do municipal work are now open to be able to do that. Um, that's the reward. The risk is now you're pairing people that don't normally work together in an industry that's super high with risk and therefore it drives up cost. So doing multiple projects and saying we're just going to do the next one and do the, do the next one, I think you know, my effort to stand up here is getting limited to do it. And uh, you know, to keep thinking that we want to keep solving the problem by, by putting it down the road, we're down the road. So that's, that's, the, that's my answer. I think Selectman could give you an answer as to how they feel. Go on just, to the next question. I'd just like to tag on to what he said, though. I live out on Plum Island. Most of us, I think, voted for the library, but we don't use it. <laughs> it's nowhere near us. We don't use it. So that's, OK, whatever that was, $60 a year, whatever. It was worth it from my perspective. Um, and then we added water and sewer. And so everybody who lives out on the island, except for people who just recently arrived, you know, is paying a, over $20,000 a year for the betterment. So we've already got that tacked on, and that's not insignificant. And then now we're talking about another 250 or whatever <coughs> a year. I think you really have to plan for Plan B here, because I think a lot of people are I mean, I understand, so I appreciate it. I'm leaning towards supporting it, but I don't anticipate that you're going to get the support from people on Plum Island. It, it's, it's tough. It's tough standing up here and keep putting another project out there. But at a certain point, <laughs> I'm not going to be up here representing a project that's not going to meet the needs. And I've been presented. I found a, um, a quote from an old architectural historian that basically said, be careful what you choose and cost. Because if you choose the lowest cost, yeah. you're going to build something, and you're going to open the door, and then everyone's going to turn around and try to look at somebody and say, well, well, well this is useless. We, we don't even have a meeting space. We don't even have, why did we cut that out? Why didn't we do that? It would have been short money just that. So we have been thinking like that. And to get to that point, we're trying not to, or we are presenting what we feel is the minimum working solution for that. The town had to condemn their own DPW barn and, and pull the trucks out and put our employees out on the uh, front pavement to figure out how to solve that solution. You know, we had trucks so old that the axles were falling off them in the street before we decided to fix them. So, you know, we had trailers, temporary trailers, temporary trailers for 11 years was a temporary solution. They had to be condemned because of mold issues in the trailers. That, that's the process that we've been dragging out and going through. Can I speak to that for a second? So the town has a basic need. It needs a police, a police station, and it needs a town hall. Currently, we own land that has public sewer and, and public water. Um, 
We don't have to purchase a building. We don't have to retrofit a building. Um, do we have? We have to pay prevailing wage. So no matter which way we go, whether we go with a brand new building or we renovate, we're still going to pay prevailing wage. Um, I personally cannot justify or vote to throwing taxpayer dollars, mine included, on a project that is not going to meet the needs of the, the, the town and we'll have to do it again. That's, that's wasteful. That's what happened in Raleigh. They had a police station that was singing and now they had to do it again. Um, I believe that this project as presented to us is not too big and it's not too small. Um, if, if, and I have to say this in retrospect, because I, I personally, well, I wasn't on the board then, but I did vote for the $12 million municipal building because I felt as if it solved the most needs of the town back in 2012, which would have addressed this building here, which is sinking. It has a wall that's going down. The fire trucks cannot fit in the fire house. Um, the, the guys and, and the way that, the, that, that there's no sleeping quarters here, it's not, I mean, we're not at the point where we're even healthy for our, some of our people. Um, this is a debt exclusion override, so the, the, your tax dollars are not going to increase. It's a, not a prop two, two and a half. So it will, once the town pays off debt, it, this will go away. There's a chance, and there's a good chance, that the governor um, will, has put money in his bond bill to help us pay for this, this project. Um, I just, I, when we were elected to help the town move forward, and to have a town, and I totally understand how, where you are on Plum Island because you did get stuck with that whole system and it wasn't what you thought it was going to be or what it should have been either. So you got the, almost the double whammy up there. Um, but to not move forward, to keep the town the way it is and not have a police station and to continue to rent space is not the best use of taxpayer money. And we need to move the town forward. Is, will it pass? Well, like Steve says, there's a, ch there's a chance that it won't. It won't pass. But that doesn't mean the need goes away. We still won't have a police station. We'll still have a condemned, a condemned building. The Massachusetts Department of Public Health came up here and looked at that building. And there were sewer flies in there. There was mold. There, was, there were OSHA violations all over it. We can't go back to that building. It's got to almost be erased and start over again. Um, so combining the town, hall. the town hall, combining the two spaces, the two needs, is the best use of dollars today. But that still doesn't address this building. So there's still going to be something else coming down. So if we build a police station, and just build a police station, we're going to have to eventually build, a, build a, uh, a town hall and then maybe 10, 15 years from now address this building. But to do it that way over time, there's the time value of money. And it's going to cost more to kick it out than a, to bite it off now. We have the, we have the, um, the town library has come off our debt. We have the town of Newberry. Um, elementary school has come off our debt. Um, what else, Tracy, has come off the debt recently? Open space that, that's coming off. So we, we're not debt ridden right now. So now is a good time for us to actually incur an, another mortgage, so to, so to speak. And then in 28 years, it'll get paid off. And then this will have to be addressed at some, at some point. But I mean, unfortunately, the need, the need is there. Can I Mark? Just real quick. I, uh, I know nothing about architecture. I know nothing about building planning. But it, it see, based on all the research you've done, and, and I think it's outstanding, I think you've been able to 
you know, answer every legitimate question that's been asked in triplicate. I, I can't imagine a town having had a more thorough, uh, full process than what we've gone through here with all these different iterations. So again, thank you. But correct me if I'm wrong. You know, someone talked about, well, build a police station for 6-5 and then was ever left over, stop. You can't get a police station built for 6-5 today, given in terms of what the police chief says his needs are. So if you're talking about building a police station now and adding to that the cost of renovating, you know, a building that everyone has always already described as a non-functional building and it's, you know, you, you know lipstick on the, on the pig, as they say, so, you know, you add all those costs together, the cost of those two projects, given the fact that it's four or five years in completion, is probably going to be $11, $12 million. And for the same $11, $12 million, you can get shiny and new. It just makes no sense to, to think about a plan B. Jeff, this lady had a question, if you don't mind. Um, I heard um, someone say the rent was $300,000. Is my understanding it's $175,000? Okay, so. Sorry, I won't continue. I thought you were done. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, believe me. Um, I, no, I just have a um, question regarding uh, using um, building police station for 6.5, which I understood can be done. I may be wrong. And continuing to rent um, the town hall. There's no maintenance whatsoever there. It's just the rent and allowing breathing space for some of the elderly that would like to remain in town. What are we going to, what's the direct, I guess, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't quite follow the question exactly. Uh, well, no, the question, uh, the first question was answered. It is only 175,000 and the other was a comment. Uh, I could speak to that comment. Uh, we keep having this thrown in our faces that we're driving the elderly out of town, but I've spent some time with the principal assessor and Tracy and we've talked about this at length. There, if someone is over 70, they can go to the principal assessor and request to not pay property taxes ever again in town. Based on financial needs, right? Based on their financial needs. So if someone is at that point, they can defer their taxes until their land sells, either when they leave town, voluntarily, or in a box. Um, there is no driving people out with these taxes. That's not the goal, that's not the aim, and it's not the reality. So I'm kind of tired of it being thrown at us. Well, I'm sorry you're tired, um, <clears throat> Jesperson, but the fact remains that that is not true. Have you gone, who? We have programs to allow people not to pay their taxes. So, if the increase in taxes is the issue, uh, they have they to be a certain uh, income, correct? Correct. And yes. they, they have, have to, to meet pay the back the town someday. Mm -hmm. So you're taking away whatever they wanted to leave their children. There are ways for them to avoid the taxes. If we all have to make budgetary choices. There, was, there are ways, but you have to be um, poor to do it. For those people who don't have to get on that program, mm -hmm. and that amount, those dollars are lost in taxes, how do you make it up? At the sale of the property, that's when it's recouped. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know that, but, I mean, so but your ta the, the taxes, don't they? Our taxes um, are what basically run the government. In the Our area. taxes. So if you're not bringing the in, getting the income at, at that time, how does that get made up? Well, as far as running. Tracy the will answer the question, but before that, yes. Yeah, so you know, someone that isn't paying their taxes is asking them to pay for it because they're hurting all of us, and the town pays over. Is it over sixty percent for education in terms of the total budget? Almost 60 percent. Almost 60% for education goes to education. So if you're in town and you don't have kids, if you're in town and you have kids, and you're older and you don't have kids, we're all paying for education. We're paying a lot for it. The next um, department is the police station. And the next highest department is the employees of town hall. And 
everybody else after that isn't even on the, it's just an asterisk at the bottom of the budget for um, employees or outside uh, employees. And so providing, I mean, that's, that's where this started is the need to provide facilities, the need to provide the right facilities. And if we have a conversation about the, what we need to provide and what we're providing and you know, making sure that we're not providing too much, or making sure we're not providing too little, this is what we're providing, then we have a cost for it. If we don't like the cost, then we're asking only to build partially what we need and not all what we need. And so through our process and through these multiple projects, and I spoke to Mark before, uh, you know, a little shame on me, but I went through and made 100 different options every, every matchable way and every option had a different price and when they had a different price, they also had a different program to them. I wasn't doing any magic by lowering the number and saying we could build all this for that number. I was saying you could probably build a police station standalone over there and what is left over could go to town hall. And really what was left over was, you know, a coat of paint and maybe an improvement to the mechanical system. So we weren't solving all the facility needs with that 6.5. And I'm sorry that I didn't make that clear, but at the end of that whole process of cycling through it, I just didn't make it clear. So the point of coming around and why are we here today and why is this the plan is the point of having the, the right spaces to serve the needs. And I spoke up before about this. Um, I'll redo the numbers, and today's numbers, to make it correct. But when you build a building, it costs about 10% of the total use cost of that building. To maintain that building is probably another 20 or 30 percent. The biggest expense, actually, it's not even 20, it's three, two or three percent to, to maintain it. The busy, big expense of the life cycle cost of a building is the employees in the building. And so, if you can improve the production of the people in the building by one percent, which is over 90 percent of the cost of the entire life cycle cost of the building compared to the minimal cost of the building, you will get a tremendous amount of efficiency. And this, this idea of planning and efficiency goes to, to um, all academic projects, and I'm sure in terms of what Jeff is trying to do and to the plan that he runs up to, Bob Connors has brought this up with his, his projects of thinking a little differently, trying to not just take old spaces that were once an office that were 300 square feet and saying, we're not doing that. You, you're going to get a smaller office, and the, two, the three of you are going to combine and share one conference room. We're not even going to give the report people an office to go sit in anymore and have chairs that they can go sit at. We're going to give them a, a bench or a, a countertop and a corridor in order to do that. We're trying to move forward in thinking new ways to minimize the program. And we feel that this is the minimum program. And the process that we went through previously came up with similar numbers to what was presented here. And the process, again, proved out that when you ask somebody and they say, what do you want? What do you really want? What do you think you really, really want? The program was, they asked for a lot. And we then took that, to repeat myself here, we selected a budget and we tried to fit it all back into a budget and we found that there's certain things that were needed that just didn't fit in that lower cost budget. So we added those back and that, that, that this is the result of that project. This program, this site plan, a result of that process to prove out What's the minimum need? Um, I don't know, Tracy, if you remember to answer the question on taxes, but taxes come down to services, and you know you have to you have to pay for your services. And in some way, we're fortunate in town to not have water and sewer, to have what we have, to have our historic town, to have open space, to have a lot of open space that's either agricultural, that's paying at a lower tax dollar, if I'm right, I'm not great on taxes and assessments, but. Um, and we have a lot of space for, um, you know, a lot of acres that dedicated or controlled by wildlife. And we all share the advantage of that and we all share the, the burden of that. What's the burden of it? The burden is less taxes, less commercial. We could be rallied. Less taxes, less, less, less demand for services. <laughs> well, if they we, don't demand any services. Yeah, but if you had that commercial base, it would be uh, lessening our school taxes, and therefore uh, we'd have more money. Never works out. Never works out. Well, you, we, we're not here to argue taxes. I won't <laughs> present it anymore. <laughs> I think Jeff had a question. Go ahead. I would like to definitely say I agree with this project. I've been at this a long time. 
I'm one of the people, I was chair when Eric and I kind of put together what we thought was the right budget. The architect is on site, there's learned program needs going forward. The original 6.5 was to always fix the police station and town hall. For me, that's what this new $12 million combined project is going to do. It's gonna fix both of them. All of a sudden, when we got to a figure of 6.5 and it wasn't enough money, everyone just wanted to build a police station. No one wanted to care about what happened to town hall and all those employees. So the responsible thing for at least the executive board of the selectmen, at least in my way of thinking, is to still proceed to the best way possible to build something that solves the original focus of needs, which was a town hall police station. And the combined building seems to do that for the least amount of money and the best way. I just want to make two quick comments. One's on operational costs, just something that's not the biggest nut to crack, but something we all need to consider in this equation. Just for comparison, operational costs of the Old Town Hill Hall, Hall building were 50000 or a little better. That's heating, cooling, maintenance, cleaning, all those things. So just having that building, you know, that'll, we'll have more operational costs if we spread ourselves out. I know some of the footprint of, of the existing building, when you factor it all in, would cancel that out, but the more buildings we have, the higher the operational costs will be. And also, um, to comment on the tax bill on the average house, it's a hard reality to face, but if 208 to $240 is the difference between you staying in your house or losing your house, you're already doomed. You're already doomed. You can't have one window replaced by a carpenter for that cost. If, if 250 is the but 208 is the straw that broke the camel's back. You're all done. I mean, it's, that's just life. It's reality. But that's not the end of it. And next year, there'll be something else the town needs. But that's life. That's but that is life. So to plan for it and do it in increments is better than to wait for the, the perfect storm of failure here, there, and everywhere, uh, school, issues that then come up and the perpetual cycle is to drag it out. And as it started in 2014, the good thought was is that the debt exclusion is going to happen <coughs> and so we could add back to it and start paying it off to keep it reasonable and be prepared for the future. But we've got a little sidetracked and that, you know, that isn't the only reason, but that, that was a big reason. Um, any more questions? Just a question for the architects. Do you have a 3D render of the street view? Not yet. No, yet. It's been requested at the last, <coughs> after the last quarter, so that's evening, so that's in progress. All right. Okay. I'm trying to avoid a little bit of who said what when, but I feel compelled to note that my memory in my recording of the tape from that October 2015 meeting in the Old Town Hall was that people were really emphasizing the police station, the police station, the police station. A few people try to say, oh, what about town hall? But it really came back to the police station, the police station, the police station as a priority. Hence my ongoing concern that we may lose the whole thing, and, and including time, for the proposal that's on the table. And just as another general comment I want to make is, well, the original option one showed a uh, 13,000 square foot police station. Apparently the police can live with a smaller one. Admittedly, it doesn't show all the utilities and stuff like that that would be done with a common building. But I would suggest that something less than 13,000 square feet, say 10,000, because it's a nice easy number to say, might be all that's needed. That would reduce the cost considerably for a standalone building. Finally, one other item in the uh, budget, which I would love to have explained during a town meeting, is the so-called contingency number of uh, you know roughly a million dollars. Uh, my understanding is that if the bids came in lower, suddenly that money wouldn't be spent, but yet we would have borrowed a million dollars at X percentage rate into the foreseeable future. It would end up being used as free cash, which is a lot less controllable by people at town meeting. So I'm concerned about this line item. 
free cash, and everything's allocated at town by the people. The budget's voted by the people. It's free cash doesn't disappear out of folks control. Tracy, would you like to comment? And, and you only borrow what you're actually going to be spending, so that it doesn't quite happen the way you mentioned these two agents. But again, it appears to me that when you go out for a bond, you're going to go out for a bond of whatever the number is, and that's going to include money for the contingency. And once you bond that money, well, then you're obligated to pay it at the interest rate that was prevailing in the garden. But well, we can go back and forth on this a lot. But I just want to let you know it's a concern. Until you're, until you're finished. Right, but there have been things like with the water and sewer hookup for this area that the bids came in less, so we had extra money left around somewhere, money that did not go back to the taxpayers, but rather went into... That was not a debt override. Right. That was allocation from town meeting for a project, and then that money returns to the town's coffers, and the town, again, decides where to allocate it. This right. is a borrowing. If we don't borrow the money, we don't have to pay for it. Okay. Again, it can arise. But again, I still believe a standalone police station is the way to go. And then I would trust the people of the town to step up for what else is needed to fix up uh, town hall. I just have a couple of simple questions. From what I'm looking at on the, the, um, the plans, it seems like we're going to tear down the old town hall and the entire mound that it's built on, right? So it's going to be basically like not really, but street level mm, to start well, with. It's not exactly. Yes and no. We are going to tear down the town hall, but part of the design anticipates that we're going to try and keep the earth as mounded as it is, or maybe even even in, increase the height so that we can hide a portion of the building um, in the hillside, essentially, as much as we can because a new building is gonna have a taller floor to floor height than the existing building. It's about eight feet or so from the, the lower level of the existing town hall to the upper level of the existing town hall, and we're not gonna be able to build an eight foot floor to floor in a new building, nor should you want to. It's, it's like a basement, essentially, and it is a basement. So in a new building, we're gonna have a taller overall building, but we're gonna try and bury that as much as we can in that hillside. So the, the, we're going to try to get as close to that existing level as, as possible. So the, the building will go away, and we're going to try and mound the earth around it so that it's, it's less apparent as to, as to the height. That doesn't answer your question. Spent a bit of money to renovate the town hall. It, it, it'll come. Uh, I mean, can they utilize any of the parts that they had uh, bought? I mean, they're failing. Well, we've talked about they have an updated dispatch board. Mm -hmm. Bring that's that over. That's been yeah, they're going to bring the antenna over and we'll yeah. rehook it up to the dispatch. There may need to be some new radios or some pieces of it, but the essence was is they just upgraded it. Yeah, we need to bring that forward. We need to bring the antenna forward. The generator you see out there, I think, is provided by Seabrook Money for living in the area. So that gets brought over. To, to piggyback on the town hall side of things, there isn't a pile of new furniture and fancy drapes and, and no, stuff planned. We, we're going to take what we have and move over there and work from there. Yeah. Um, Where are the police going? I guess that's going to be the next big question. Hey, we're going to tear down where we're they gonna are. Tomorrow, so we relocate them. Well, we're going to build a, a set of trailers here. They'll, they'll be, um, well, Trace is pointing at a different thing. So we haven't decided. <laughs> I, I, I had a, a thought that we put a temporary police station here, but the possibility exists it could use this space. It's not built out yet, so it could be, it could be here. But there'll be a temporary, it's a, it's a line item in the budget right now for a temporary home while the construction is ongoing. We'll have to move. They have to be 24-7 operations, so we'll have to move their uh, communications equipment to the new location, the temporary location, then back into the new building. So that is part of that $12 million cost. I just want to say thanks to everybody that presented the information today. And I think a lot of interesting questions and concerns were voiced. But I just have to say it's very disheartening to me that less than 1% of the population of the town is here to get this information today. 
It's going to be an interesting special town meeting on October 23rd. Less than 1% of the population will be somewhat informed thanks to, thanks to what you did today. 6,600 people in town, 4,000 some odd registered voters, yep. 3,000 some odd property owners, and we have average attendance of 400 at an at annual town meeting, less at special town meeting. Yep. Point taken. Anybody else? So after this up, they could play. Can I just add real quick? I'm new to town, right across the street, and very happy that first study is done, and we're going with this. I like this. I think it was um, when we moved to town, we, we wondered why we didn't see a town hall on the common. So it's good. But I just wanted to add to your, I know this is all conceptual, but if you could think about the safety of the people walking from that required parking to that town hall, there is no sidewalk and that kind of thing. And, and you still have to walk in front of the fire station. So, so admittedly, that's less ideal, walking in front of the fire station. But as part of this project, there would be a sidewalk taking you from that parking lot to the, the town hall so that you'd be you know, protected essentially. Um, we can't do anything about the fact the fire station is where it is and those fire trucks will come out, um, but everything else will be taken care of. Great, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Eric, uh, I want to thank everybody here too because it's a lot of hard work over the year. Uh, my, my question, first question is, what is on the warrant one or two of these in the handout sheets. What's presently going on there? Is there an option? One or two? Or? The warrant is we're not voting on a project for the warrant. We're just voting for a dollar, a dollar half. So this, like I think Jeff said, a conceptual drawing is not, is not a, There's one, one plan. There's two plans here. First is called the first study. Right. The other one is called the proposed option. So at town meeting, what are we going to talk to the people about? Both? No, no, no. This, this, no. Is, this is the option that's being brought up. There's only one option. option. There's a okay. study that got you to the option. Okay. Studies that got so, you to the option. Okay, so we're at $12 million. Okay. I, uh, I believe this is uh, too big a building. It's too expensive. The lot's too small. It's a bad location. And I think I want to succeed our needs. I also believe that there's a, a separation. So you want to build a bigger? Larry, like, well, you finish, you just said it won't meet our needs. I, I know, Jack, but. Could I finish, please? Good, please okay. finish. I believe there's a separation of powers, physical of the police station, not to be attended to the town hall, would be a good thing. I also want to comment that the room we're sitting in here is 4,000 square feet. That's important. I, uh, I've run through four proposals. This took me an hour this morning to do. The original one, going back to 2016, bringing the dollars up ahead, would be maybe $9 million. Eric and I talked before the meeting. His number was even less than that. Just on uh, installation. Okay. Now, secondly, my second, third, and fourth itemized numbers uh, Adding a thousand square feet to the town hall from the one that you had two years ago, the number then would be 9.3. Adding 2,000 square feet to the proposal two years ago for the town hall would be 9.8. And adding 3,000 square feet to the town hall you had two years ago would be 10.2. So if you went to the most expensive proposal I had with my numbers, all based on the unit cost that the town has put out on the table in the last two months. The total square footage for Town Hall would be 10,600. The total for the police station would be 10,000. And that's presently what the square footage is in this proposal here. My numbers come to a little over 10. The town's numbers come to 12. So I believe that by putting renovating and adding on to Town Hall, you're going to stand alone police station over here would save you $2 million. Be willing to stand up by these numbers uh, and you, take copies of what you want, but I, I did want to get this out on the table. I think it's important for people to understand. When I say wants and needs, when I talk about cost, I've got something here based on the square footage that you want and the unit cost that you propose is $2 million less than the $12 million you're putting on the warrant. 
So we gave you information to get to that. Could you give us a copy of that? Be glad we, to. We can review and respond to it. Be glad to. And you, you know, you say it's a bad site, and then you say it's a good site. You. If we can build it for less, that's great. Yeah, it, it, and there is some unknown about what the local market and construction costs will bring in. It, it's a concept. Your concept is, there's two different concepts. My concept is one, the proposed is, two, is a second concept. Your concept is to tear down a town hall and build one building. My concept is to renovate and add to the town hall, which you said two years ago that's what you wanted to do, and that's what the vote has approved, and then build a standalone police station. So my numbers go back to two years ago, and they're two billion dollars less than your proposal to bring to the town meeting. So when you said that's what we, we said that we, we wanted to do, I think that the that the, at the time that the town voted the six and a half million, it was also a second item on the warrant of 4.2 million. If, if we can't, we being the architect, can't build a police station for 6.5 million, we no way in hell could build one for 4.2 million. So when you say that, that we, we wanted to, the six and a half million was what we, what we got. We tried to make it work. Believe me, we tried to make it work. And these guys are saying, fast forward two, two years, we can't make that work. So Alicia, that's not what I'm saying. You don't, you're don't. you completely missing the point. I'm making a comparison between your plan and the plan basically you proposed two years ago with the square footage you want today, upgraded square footage, upgraded unit cost, and we're saving $2 million. Right. Well, Eric, you'll, you'll bet that out, right? Okay. Yeah, I'll look at his numbers, and we'll yeah. take the numbers that we have, and we'll plug in what we think is or isn't there, or confirm what what Jim has done. And certainly, if, it, if, if we say it's $12 million, I'd certainly like to get, I know it's a large number, I, I don't want my taxes to go up, Jim, but I want. I would love to have just a discussion where we all decide just on program. We select a program on an understanding of what the town needs, and then we walk out of here and say, that's the project that we want. But let me further the comment that my numbers are, are pushed to all your requests. And I don't believe, I believe you're asking for two square feet. Do so you okay? think the square so footage is Let me is finish here. This is, this is the 10,000 square foot for the police station hasn't changed in two years. My proposal is using exactly what you're going to cost your 10,000 square feet. The only thing that's changed in the past two years is what you're doing to town hall. And so that's, which that's, that's grown considerably from what you wanted. You're, you're intimate with the numbers. I don't have to tell you what they are. You already know what they are. So again, my $10 million is it numbers that I don't even believe in because I think the square footage is too big. Do so you think that the building is too big for what, what they're saying? What they're proposing here, you think that the square footage is too big. Is that I what you just do, said? I do believe that. Well, again, I can go back to saying that I do not want to I, make the same mistake that the town of Raleigh did and build something. But I've made an apples to apples comparison of the square footage to my plan versus the square footage to your plan is identical. My plan is $2 million less than your plan. Well, if we can do it for $2 million less, I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. so this plan is 18,600 square feet. What did you say yours was? Say again, Jeff. 18,600 square feet. What did you say yours was? 20,600. Now, how I came up with you that got, you had to be was, was what we talked feet. about Tuesday. Yeah. You wanted to add 2,000 feet onto the 18.6. Yes. I got you. What was the construction cost used? For the construction cost in total for town hall was two point, was about three million. The station was 4.5. That's your direct threat. No, per square foot. What did you use per square foot? You're talking about, well, it, it's a variable number depending on what type of work you want to do. The basement renovations, I use $300 a square foot. The first floor renovations, I used $100 a square foot. For the addition, I used $400 a square foot, which is identical as the town is carrying right now. And for the police station, I used $450 a square foot. Now, so keep in mind, those are only construction costs. In yeah. addition to that, you have a half a million dollars in design costs, that's $400,000 in OPM costs. Furnishings are $680 bid moving and other items are 150 
subtotal is 9.2, a 10% contingency is 900,000, and the ten, that's where I come up with 10.2. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jim. Not a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to kind of get a feel for time. So I think you said like six to seven months to get your detailed plan all packed up. And then um, if it goes forward, groundbreaking would be around August. Yeah, it depends on when we I release mean, the start. But, right. You know, I mean, I think you projected something like the beginning of December. If, if the project was approved and we were given the go-ahead to start, let's say, December 1 on this process, we'd be, um, let's see, what, June, or starting uh, bidding for the project, and then that takes a couple of months, and so you'd probably be in August when you start groundbreaking, uh, and then approximately a year or so for, for 14 months. construction, 14, 14 months, months or so. From groundbreaking. Yeah. Okay, that's all. Is the town planning on discussing this first study of town meeting? What's the first study? This is your one for 14 minutes. Well, right. I think we talked about that. Eric? Well, it's because it was on the internet. Yeah, but at town, on town meeting, well, it was not Yes, like there, there would be a very short and simple, okay. hopefully concise, as I started off, if I could do a better job, a walkthrough of how we got to. And now, the that, that being said, because it's a handout today, what you tell us on this sheet for the first study is 25,600 square feet. And what you're telling us in the proposal is 18,600. So if in fact you do bring this up, you should make it an apples to apples comparison because right now it's apples and pears and there's a huge difference in what you put in. And give it, and here to help the people. Okay. I think this is a very I think distorted the, piece the of paper that you're handing out. Go I ahead. think the point is that, to be fair to everyone that's involved, is that the reason it was provided is that was the starting point, and it's different from what we are today. We're not asking you to make a comparison between the two because we started. Let me finish. Would you let me finish? Today, they don't know that. You wouldn't let me finish. Excuse me. So, it's important for people to understand this is an iterative process. We start at the beginning. We worked with a program that got to that number. We got a budget based on that program, based upon what the town originally wanted to do, which was to build a new police station and renovate the town hall. That led us to the comments that were made at the beginning of the meeting, which was there was no way the town could afford the $14 million that that project was going to cost. So from that point forward, the town asked, Board of Selectmen asked, what could we do for a lower dollar value, which is what we did in the meantime, there's a number of different iterations till we got to where we are today with a combined building that tried to make the, the best use of the program that we had to get to the police to the smallest number that they could be at, the town to the smallest number that they could be at and function, which combining the two made the most effective use of the town's dollars, even considering we would have to build a temporary police station. That 750000 is still included. That's the the least amount of money for the best amount of program. And so I think the, the reason was put on the handout was to just give people an understanding of where we started from to where we are today. It was not meant as a either or, option A, option B, option. I think if we just, I mean, there is one proposed option on the table. That, that I'd, I'd suggest if you're gonna talk about it, that you're limited to one. All you're gonna do is confuse people, and, and it's a very distorted, yeah. piece of paper and the, people here today I'm sure they don't even understand it. The point being that when you ask the police, when you ask the town hall what space they need to provide the best service to the residents, they came up with this this space allotment which came out to be 14 million. And everybody knew that that wasn't going to fly and that was too much and so the effort was made to condense it down to the minimum space program and that's the option being presented. Well, thanks everybody, this is great, appreciate it.